Anyone else want to tell me if this is an externality or not? Uh, sorry, remind me of your name? Siraj. Siraj. Yeah, it's not an externality. Okay. It's just the market working. So when it's applying, uh, <coughs> increase like price is more. It's, so it's within the market, so it's not an externality. Yeah, so more specifically, the that, that's absolutely right. But the reason it's not an externality is that if I come in and I hurt the <coughs> other gold producers by lowering the price of gold, I also help everyone who wants to buy jewelry because the prices of gold goes down. So for every dollar that the gold producers get hurt, the gold consumers benefit, right? And the reason is this is mediated through the price system, as Shiraj said, right? Any time an externality I cause is mediated through the price system, it happens through the adjustment in prices, it's not a real externality. It's just what we call a pecuniary externality. Um, and many of the most common misapplications of the theory of externalities come from the fact that people fail to understand this distinction and therefore think certain things are externalities that aren't really externalities. And therefore they advocate intervention even when it's not called for. So for example, imagine that one company comes into the industry and lowers the prices by competing and that makes all the other companies worse off. Uh, that's not an externality, right? because the consumers benefit just as much as the companies are hurt. Now, um, Eric, what if um, rather than lowering the prices, the new company came in that came in just took profitable sales away from the other companies, but didn't actually lower the prices? Would that be an externality or not? How would they? So for example, imagine that a company comes into an industry there's currently a monopoly in the industry, and now the new company comes in and they collude with them, but they just split the sales, whereas there used to just be one company before the price is the same. <coughs> is that an externality or not? Uh, yeah, because uh, the numbers aren't benefiting. Exactly right. So um, consumers don't benefit. It's only the other firm that's harmed. And the reason is I didn't change the price. This wasn't mediated through the price system. It was mediated through me directly stealing the sales, right? And so uh, that is not a pecuniary externality. It's a real externality. On the other hand, you know, if we have free trade with China and China exports things to the United States, that might cause some steel worker to lose their job. <coughs> but, um, but the reduction in the price that they get for their labor is a benefit to the other people who might potentially employ them. And so it's not a, a real externality. If I pollute a lake, and that causes the fish in the lake to die, and that causes the price of fish to rise, that's not a pecuniary, that, that's a, just a pecuniary externality, it's not a real externality, because the higher price of the fish benefits other people who produce those fish. But it seems very clear that polluting the lake is, an extra, is a direct externality on somebody. So, um, uh, Chan Yun? Chan Yun? D does anyone else have a guess of who the real victim of the externality is? Yeah, go ahead. Or like fish lovers or fishermen or fixianados, people who care about the environment. Yes, yeah, it, it is a direct externality on them. So if somebody just like loves loves fish, what's your name again? Matt. Matt. Um, that, that's a good point. What, what do you think of the guy that gets cancer for eating fish? <laughs> uh, not if the price of fish falls enough to compensate him. <laughs> uh, yeah, Link. Um, so people who live around the lake because they're not benefiting from the pollution at all? Not quite. Anyone else want to give it a try? What's, what's your name? Michael. Right? Michael. The people who own the lake. Are the lake. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Okay. That's the right answer. So the, the people who own the lake, or if, imagine there's fishermen who have like an exclusive right to fish. So they like basically own the fish in the lake. They're the ones who are directly harmed by that because it's their fish that are being destroyed. Um, and this sort of thing can happen even when there's not a literal, literal uh, marketplace, even when there's just a figurative marketplace. So imagine that your, your roommate, um, who's brilliant, gets stoned. 
and as a result, you do better on the curve of the exam, right? <laughs> now, that is not really a positive externality, it's just a pecuniary externality. Because while it benefits you because you have less competition, it harms uh, me because my students do less well overall, right? Um, and similarly, selective abortions of women, which are very common in East Asia and South Asia, do not actually create positive real externalities for the other women who are now able to get better men. Because the men are just as much worse off than the, as the women are better off, right? Because in the market for mates, the, the price of those women goes up, and that hurts the men and benefits the uh, women. <coughs> um, and this distinction might seem like an esoteric economic distinction, but it actually shows up all over uh, the law. So there's a very famous distinction between physical and purely economic damages. So if you hit a doctor in your car, or if you burn down somebody's house, or if you defame somebody else's <coughs> character, uh, those are all, if not physical, at least direct harms to those individuals. And you have to pay damages for doing that. However, you don't have to pay damages for causing purely economic losses. So for example, if the patients of that doctor who you hit with your car no longer have a doctor, uh, to go to and have to go to another doctor, that benefits the new doctor they go to as much as it, uh, as it harms them, and so the overall uh, value is zero. So there's no pecuniary externality to them, there's only the direct externality on the doctor. If the value of other homes in a neighborhood rises because the home burned down, and therefore the housing stock is more scarce, that harms just as much the people whose uh, who are buying as it helps the people who are selling, right? But, on the other hand, imagine that that actually causes the price of houses in the neighborhood to go down, because that house was so beautiful that now that it's gone, everybody else in the neighborhood is sad. That was an externality, because it took away that externality. That is a real externality on everybody else. So these things are very subtle, and we're going to go through a bunch of examples to try to calibrate your intuition of them. So um, these, um, basically, pure economic losses are exactly the same as pecuniary externalities. They're indirect, price-mediated harms. And this was a huge issue for the Deepwater Horizon disaster. Do you have a question? Yeah. yeah. So for, what's your name? Cole. the home values fall, would that mean, uh, the buyers would benefit then? The no, because the home buyers won't won't benefit because they won't have the house to look at either. Oh, okay. You see what I mean? It falls exactly in correspondence with how much worse it is for them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the deep water horizon disaster when there was this giant oil spill caused all these problems, right? And it was a really big issue which things are pure economic damages and which things are um, actual uh, physical damages. And I want to go through some examples and see if you guys can figure them out. So, um, Vidor, uh, what do you think? Do, were the shrimping employees, like the people who worked in the shrimping industry, uh, did, were, were they, did they only receive pure economic losses, or do you think they were physically damaged by this bill? They were physically because they lost their job. Well, so what really happened, right, is that the, the their wage went down. That made them cheaper for someone else to hire. Okay, so and they so they were not hired. physically damaged. So yeah. it was a pure economic damage. Um, second, uh, uh, see me out. Uh, the government... Uh, Conservation Agency, which is in charge of protecting birds, was it purely economically harmed or was it directly harmed by the disaster? Oh, I don't really know the people on the horizon. So, well, okay. So, so there's a giant oil spill. There's a government agency that has the responsibility of protecting the birds. Okay. Uh, and, and they're sort of in charge of conservation. <coughs> do, do they suffer a pure economic loss or do they suffer a um, 
a physical loss when there's a bunch of pollution that kills <coughs> other birds. I think there's um, some of the physical damage. Yeah, I mean, explain why. Because so, um, the birds are dead, it's um, some physical damage to them, because they're supposed to be in charge of protecting birds or birds yeah. are dead. Effectively, they own the birds, right? Like, they're in charge of owning the birds on behalf of society uh, for the benefit of the public, right? So they, they, their job is to take care of the birds, right? And those birds die, it's sort of like a zoo. If, a zoo. if someone comes and, like, shoots all the animals in the zoo, that is a physical damage to the zoo, right? Um, <coughs> how about Louisiana hotels serving uh, the shrimping industry? Like, people came down and stayed at the hotels, when they had business meetings, and now there's the shipping industry is dead, uh, and they can no longer do that. What do you think, David? Whoa. Yeah. Um, wouldn't this be like um, the pollution? So you think it's which? Um, maybe physical. You think it's a physical loss? What, what do you think, Edward? Isn't it just like an economic loss? Because even though like we're serving those shrimp, like that's just like you know that's, the price of shrimp went down, so the price is just going to go down. Yeah, well, so, so really and, and who benefits? Who, who yeah, benefits on the other side? Well, the person who wants to come and take a vacation in Louisiana, right? Because now the price of the hotel, which used to be serving the industry, is now much lower, and it's really cheap to stay at that hotel, and so the consumers benefit. Um, Vrushank, what about shippers through the port in Louisiana? So, uh, so, so the shippers wouldn't have a job anymore, but the quality of their labor would go down, and so they would be cheaper to hire by someone else. Well, so the problem is that the port, you don't pay anything in order to access the port. Oh, okay. If there was someone who owned the port, then, oh, then their price would go down and the other people wouldn't your, receive a real damage. damage. So they, but it, because they don't pay anything for the port, they effectively own part of the port you know, the right to go into the port, and so they're, they're physically damaged. Um, okay, so what we've just showed is that not everything where I end up hurting someone else is a real externality. But it's also the case that not everything that I do to myself uh, <coughs> is just fine and efficient. Um, individuals often neglect or ignore or impose undue costs on themselves in the future or even now. Uh, so these types of effects are called internalities, and rather than policies addressing them being called externality policy, they're called paternalism. So um, the idea is very similar to in a market. If there are things that you should be taking into account about how they you know, hurt you, you should do that. Or if they have things that you should be taking into account about they, how they help you, uh, you, should, you should do more of that. Um, and in fact, large areas of public policy <coughs> are determined not by externalities, but by internalities. <coughs> so all the policies we have about drug addiction uh, and regulating drugs are about internality policy. Um, because many people believe that addicts would be better if they quit. Uh, rather than if they um, keep using the drug. And this justifies sin taxes, prohibitions of using drugs, etc. Also, we often require people or subsidize people saving for their retirement because we think that people will be tempted not to save enough and to spend the money today. Yeah? Is it just like they do better off from like a health wise or I mean, like well, lifestyle wise? I mean, like, how is that? I mean, I'm not saying I believe this, okay. but, but I'm saying a lot of people do believe that. I mean, a lot of people think that the addicts are doing things that are not in their own interest. That basically they're serving their like, short-term desires and that what would be good for them in the long run. And, you know, we talk like this all the time, right? So, like, people always talk about, you know, you need to be strong, have willpower, you know, work harder now because it will be good for you in the long term, right? And that you're not doing enough of that. And that, you know, and I think we almost all have the feeling of sort of fighting with ourselves over things that we know we should be doing and things that we're tempted to do. Right? Okay. Yeah. It seems like the, the idea of an internality is, has to assume that individuals aren't completely rational, maybe, because they're not making the optimal choice for themselves.